there's a good chance you're a self-taught artist if you're watching this video. And it's about a point that I've included in a couple of recent videos about being a self-taught artist. But I've come to realize it's way more significant than I first thought. That for many self-taught artists, in fact, it could be described as a trap. And it could be the reason why for many people, they don't feel that their drawing is improving for all the time, effort and resources they put into it. And I say this is a trap for self-taught artists because it's not nearly as big an issue if I do a course. Now, this video is not telling you you should do a course, but it might help to understand the trap more if we understand what happens with a course, which means we don't fall into it. Whether it's a three or four year university fine arts course, whether it's a local college course, or just a community group that meets in a local hall run by someone. Well, if I'm doing a course, I'm doing material someone else has prepared for me to step through. And the material has been arranged in some sort of logical, consistent, step-by-step -step pattern. Skills are introduced at a certain point. I'm given opportunity to use those skills and then more skills are developed. I'm given more opportunity to work on all of those skills, whether it's work we do in the lesson or homework or assignments that we do. A course usually starts with the basics. It may start with the actual materials that we use and the options that we might have. And depending on the nature of the course, there could be teacher feedback as well, quite specific direction about how I'm going with my drawings with the material that's being covered. Now, let's not underestimate the skill and hard work involved in organizing a course. I have done that myself in the past and so I'm not likely to underestimate that. But the skills needed to develop a course are not the same skills that we need to actually learn to draw ourselves. This is a really important point to understand the trap that I'm about to describe. The skills I needed to design a course about drawing are not the same skills that I needed to develop my drawing itself. And this makes sense. People study at university to become teachers. People do PhDs on the learning experience, on how we learn. The learning process itself is a skill that is quite separate from the drawing process and learning the drawing process. But when I'm a self-taught artist, I have to work all this out for myself as well as do the actual drawing that I do. I have to decide what I'm going to draw, what I'm going to use to draw, the method, the approach, the technique I'm going to use in the drawing, the size I'm going to draw. And I'm not going to get any feedback on my drawing except the feedback I can give myself. And going, ah, that's rubbish, I'm hopeless, is not feedback. Feedback gives direction, gives a focus for future work. It's a very positive, encouraging thing. So if I'm self-taught, how do I map out a course, a direction for my drawing journey? I like to summarize it in the question, how do we learn to learn? Because this, I believe, is the trap that many self-taught artists fall into because we're not even aware it's a thing it's an issue that learning to learn actually sits before learning to draw. And if I do a course, I don't really need to worry about it because I'm paying the course organizer to have worked out that learning process first. But when I'm guiding myself on the drawing journey, I have to make all these decisions myself. And I think that when we struggle to improve, when we get discouraged because we feel like we're not making any ground in our drawing, it's easy to blame our lack of ability or the lack of drawing talent or to put the blame on ourselves and our drawing. And I think often, sadly, to give up. We think, what's the point? I'm not good enough. I can't learn to draw. And it's just not true. I may be excellent at drawing, but what I'm lousy at is I'm lousy at designing a learning course for drawing. And that's the problem. Now, I'm largely self-taught in my drawing and I escaped this trap without even realizing the trap was there because in a galaxy far, far away, in fact, in the early 80s, I was a high school English teacher. 
So in my training for that, we studied how we learn, the process of learning. And I also learned how to teach, I hope. But this meant that when I decided I wanted to really work at drawing and develop drawing skills, and I had to work out how to do it without realizing I had learned all of this learning to learn stuff back in my university days. Now, of course, I'm not saying that we need to be trained teachers to be a self-taught artist, but it has confirmed to me that the biggest problem we may have in being a self-taught artist is not finding resources that we can use. Hey, you found this video, didn't you? But it's knowing which resources to use, when to use the resources, which resources to leave out, which ones to avoid completely. There's an abundance, there's an overabundance, and it's this overabundance of resources which I think is the biggest part of the trap. There is just so much out there, it's overwhelming. And it's overwhelming because basically it's all disorganized. I don't mean any one video is disorganized, but we find the videos, we come across them almost at random. Videos to do with different levels of drawing, videos for kids, videos for adults, videos for pen drawing, videos for ink drawing, videos for architectural drawing, videos for drawing horses, videos for background drawing, videos for digital drawing, and most of it will be irrelevant for me. Not because they might not be any good, but because drawing is such a huge area, covers such a wide range of subjects and materials and approaches that the sort of drawing I'm doing will only ever involve a very tiny amount of the possibilities. Another important factor with this wealth of online material is that much of it will be contradictory. And it's not because some of it is right and some of it's wrong, it's simply that there are different ways of drawing, different approaches, different techniques, different methods of learning, and a little bit of this one and a little bit of that one may actually be teaching opposite things, contradictory things. And if I don't realize this, I may think the problem is not with the material, but it's with me. And that I feel confused because there's something wrong with my ability to understand what's being said. And the quality of the teaching videos will vary. Some of it will be excellent. Some of it will be very entertaining. Some of it will be okay. Some of it will be pretty useless. And some of it could even be harmful for my learning to draw. And as a self-taught artist, I have to make all these choices. I have to be juggling all these thoughts in my head when I'm trying to work out what videos will I actually watch. When I'm doing all that endless scrolling when my eyes start to glaze over. And of course the question is, how much do I even need to be watching how to draw videos as opposed to just actually putting that time into drawing? Probably less than we think. And so this is the trap. I haven't realized that learning to learn is so crucial in learning whatever skill it is I'm learning. And particularly when I've had to organize my own learning as a self-taught artist. When I feel I've had a problem actually improving in my drawing, it's easy to blame a lack of skill. When the problem really was this hidden part of the journey of working out how I was going to learn the skill I wanted to learn. So if that's the trap, what's the way of avoiding the trap? Is there a path I can navigate through the how to learn to learn journey so that I can get onto the best path for the learning and improving my drawing skills journey? So let me go on to what I think are some very helpful points, some very helpful directions from some very helpful ways of thinking need to help me make the most of the resources that I use and the time I spend. The first and most important point is to have a clear focus on the end point I want to get to. And the more specific, the better. Because every clear, specific thing that I choose eliminates a huge range of options. That makes it then easier to look well and make choices from those options that are still in the running for my attention. So not just I want to learn to draw, Maybe what level of drawing am I starting with? Do I want to draw with pencil? Do I want to draw with pen? Do I want to draw with charcoal? Do I want to use tone? Will it come from markers or ink washes or from watercolor? If I have an idea of what I want to be doing at the end of this journey, I will make different choices 
in terms of the best material that will get me there. And in the same way, the sorts of skills and knowledge I need to build up and develop in drawing figures is very different to drawing architecture. There are lots of things common to both. But if I have a strong, specific sense of what I want to finish up drawing, if I learn my skills in the context of these subjects, besides the fact I'll probably find it more interesting, I will also develop them faster because I'll be putting the same set of skills to work, the same set of knowledge to work in drawing after drawing after drawing. Whereas if I go from a building to a landscape to a horse, I'm not going to have the same opportunity to consolidate those skills. But if I go really deep in one area, then later, if I want to jump around to other areas, I've actually learned a lot of things about drawing really well, which will make it much easier to pick up other areas of drawing and to start them at a really advanced level. So the more specific our learning focus can be, the more we can narrow down the material that we have to look at, the easier and quicker it will be to find the most relevant, most helpful things. This next tip when I'm choosing resources to use, a good general principle is I want to be moving from the more simple to the more complex in everything that I do. Because as I just said, getting really good at one thing, and this includes at one level, lets us move on to the next level more effectively. From simple to complex, walking before running. So I might draw a cottage before I draw the facade of the Musée du Louvre. And if I find videos that look great, but I'm not where I'm at right now, then I should bookmark them so that I can find them easily in the future and that will save me time when I do reach the point where those skills will be far more useful for me to have some teaching on and opportunity to practice. But I shouldn't let a video that I'm not ready for push me faster than I really am ready to go. I may draw these subjects that are far too advanced for me badly and therefore mistake my ability to be able to draw them in the future. I think this next point is actually very important. Find a few video presenters and stick with them, if at all possible. Although don't presume that all of the videos that the one artist or the one teacher may put out are necessarily all going to be useful for you, even if some of them are very useful for you. You still need to make choices. But the reason why this can be helpful is that usually in a course it's come from one person's mind. One person has planned it all out. The direction and the order and the progression. And so there's a consistency, a unity in that, that we lose if we do, say, a chapter from one course, a chapter from another course, a chapter from another course. But a series of videos made by the one person will presumably, mostly at least, come from the one place, the one approach, the one way of thinking. There won't be a danger that what's being said here might be actually clashing with something I saw yesterday or a week ago. And it is a time saver because we won't be having to scroll endlessly through all these videos. Another important point, if I'm self-taught, is I shouldn't keep changing the sort of art I'm doing, the sort of drawing I'm doing. And watching lots of individual videos that I find online that don't connect with each other in any progressing way can actually encourage me to do this because I come across a great video on watercolour and I think, oh, I'd love to try that. And look, if I'm a creative, artistic person, the chances are there are 20 different ways of producing works on paper, all of which I could get excited about. And so it often doesn't take much in a video to make me think, oh, I really want to have a go at that. To go wide with lots of different areas, but only to go very shallow because we only do a little bit in each of a wide number of media means we're never going to develop any real skill level in any of them. I can always change my focus, of course, but at a given point, we need to stay focused in a reasonably narrow channel so that we can really hone our skills and our experience. I think this next point is probably another little trap that online videos can trip us up into falling into. And that's don't mistake skillfully made videos with videos that are actually going to be good teaching you to draw. Hey, there are lots of really entertaining videos out there. Little animated things appearing everywhere. I'm lucky to plug the microphone into the... <laughs> I 
I've just realized I haven't put my microphone on. It's just hanging down loose. See, here it is. Let me just peg it to... So I'm not one of these people making really skillful videos with lots of technical whiz bang. And I'm also probably not making the most interesting videos either. But the most entertaining, the most interesting, the most technically advanced videos are not necessarily going to be any use to you in learning to draw. There may be a dead boring presenter with a very static camera, but who's actually saying things and demonstrating things that will be useful for your learning to draw journey with where you're at at the moment and where you're hoping to go to. But don't judge how good a video is for your drawing learning process on that basis. This next point is don't get sucked into the vortex of tips, tricks, shortcuts videos. And I have to blush because I have produced a few of those myself. But the thing is, when you look at the so-called tips and hacks and shortcuts, some of them are rubbish, some of them are pretty obvious. But even with the useful ones, we get them as a standalone tip, not really in a drawing process context, not really as part of an ongoing journey, learning new skills, developing them, consolidating them and so forth. We can see the tip, we can understand it, but not really then know how we apply it in our drawing because it's just been as a little thing over here on the side. It hasn't been taught to me in the context of a lesson on drawing as a smaller part of a larger thing, which is what all these techniques and tips and hacks are. They're small parts of a larger thing, which is the total finished drawing. And maybe that some of them would be useful when you do portraits but you have no intention of doing portraits. So the best way to learn whatever's in the useful tips and shortcuts is to have them, as I said, in the context of a lesson, because then we'll know exactly how to use them, when to use them, and we'll get practice at using them in the drawings that we're doing at that time. And you don't have to have watched too many of my videos to have heard me say this before, but it's so important, and that's, if I'm a self-taught artist, I have no teacher who's going to mark my work. I need to look at my work and I need to be as realistic and reasonable as I can be in critiquing it, in looking at it and saying, does it look right? Is it what I was hoping for? If not, why not? If there are things that don't look quite right, why don't they look quite right? And how can I change what I've done to bring it closer to, in my mind, the effect I was trying to create? And if I'm not sure myself, it's very helpful to get a fresh set of eyes from a good friend or family member who we won't have to fear will be worried about hurting our feelings, but who can happily say, mm, this bit doesn't look quite right. I don't think the way you've done the leaves on this tree is very realistic. This building doesn't look quite right. I don't know why. I don't think the perspective lines are right, but I couldn't tell you what they should be because the person doesn't even need to be able to say, what's actually wrong, just our being told it doesn't look quite right, is in itself tremendously helpful. If there's no one to ask, sometimes holding our drawing up to a mirror and seeing it flipped into reverse, will let us see things such as perspective areas that aren't quite right, that we got used to seeing as we draw them and so they don't look wrong to us, but if we suddenly see the image new in a slightly different way, it's more obvious. But however we manage to get ourselves feedback on our work, on our drawings, constructive feedback that gives us direction for where to focus in our next drawing, it's a very helpful, vital thing to do. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Being a self-taught artist can bring a lot of wonderful freedom with it. We get to make all these great choices about what we do and how we do it, but we can go on this process a lot better, use our time a lot more effectively, if we realize that we're doing two things. We're not just learning to draw, but we're learning how to learn. And they're the skills that we actually use when we work out what am I doing, what resources that are available out of the huge overabundance of online resources, what resources are going to be most helpful for that end result. Not necessarily most entertaining, but most helpful to use to get me to the place with my drawing learning that I want to get to. And whatever you do, don't give up on learning to draw because you don't think you've progressed enough to the place you thought you'd be with your actual drawing. 
if you haven't considered maybe the problem is not my drawing ability but the way I've been trying to learn to draw my learning process that's actually been the problem that's the bit that was too random was too disjointed that I was spending time with things that were actually never going to get the drawing I want to do to the place I want it to be and I need to become much more focused in some of these points that I've just talked about. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis and I do hope this was interesting but I really hope it's been helpful as well and I hope it will help you get the very best opportunities of being a self-taught artist in this day and age with so much available online without falling into the traps that are all around us. But however you're learning and whatever you're doing at the moment, make sure with your drawing you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.